Yeah, welcome back. We are still here talking about environment. I promised you that we're going to talk about the dangers, the disaster that plastic pollution brings to us, especially here in Lagos State. And we're glad that we uh, have in the studio here uh, Mr. Oladakbo Shoneye, uh, Communications Manager, Nigeria Conservation Foundation. Good morning and welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, we're talking plastics today, but first of all, let me just have a peek into what the conservation society is facing in Nigeria. You want to conserve the forest. You want to conserve the species that we have in Nigeria. We want to conserve a lot of things that we find in nature that sometimes we do not even find anywhere else in the world. What has your challenge been like? Okay, so number one is um, funds are not available. That's one major challenge. From who? Fund from corporate organization or from individual who can actually uh, provide support, even from government, you know, you don't get enough funds to do some of these projects. Number one, you get resistance. If you want to talk about protecting the environment and um, forest, you say, okay, this forest, don't, don't exploit it. Um, don't cut down the tree, you see. You have a lot of resistance, you know, in that aspect. So you also have a lot of... Um, um, People lack um, understanding or education about how to manage their environment. Even this issue of plastic pollution that we have is because people don't know. So when you begin to say, don't do this, this is how to do it, yeah, people feel, what is it? What is the environment will survive? Don't worry yourself. It's the least of the worries of people. So that's so that is an attitude that you get from a whole lot of people. You know, that's, and that's the, some of the major problems. Uh, we are facing and we are trying to go to using the media platform to talk to people why it's important that they should support environment, why we should make funds available. Corporate organizations in your CSR, why it is very, very necessary for you to give big budget mm. to environment matters. Mm. Okay, let's zero in on the pl pl plastics that we're talking about now. Why, um, why now? Okay, give us a picture of how it is a disaster to our environment oh okay so um le let's start this way um, in lagos for instance generates about uh, thirteen thousand metric tons of waste so 10 percent about that waste is plastic so in in our head for those of us who understand um, um who can picture the weight and the size of when you say metric tons so you can imagine the amount of plastic we generate in a day now number one where is the space to even put this waste? If we pass through Olusosun, you see that strength that comes from there. Mm. So you discover that, that. So that is telling us that we need to reduce the amount of waste we generate. That's number one. Number two, that we need to see how we can manage the waste. Or before it becomes a waste, what can we do to deal with it? Because it's going to constitute nuisance to our environment. Mm -hmm. It's polluting our environment. So the plastic now, polluting our environment, litter everywhere. It rained about two days ago. We know we are familiar with it that every time we see flood, and so what you see around is the plastic. And when you say plastic, you're talking about the pet bottle, you're talking about the nylons, you're talking about the cellophanes, you're talking about the uh, takeaway plastic that people use at functions and other. So you see them everywhere. You know, that's one of the problems. So it's an eyesore. It litters the place, it dirties the environment. Number two is that because of the nature of the plastic that it does not decompose, for maybe up to about a thousand years or over hundred years, at least in the minimum. It means that uh, whatever it gets to, if it's not properly de um, disposed or uh, as waste not properly managed, it lives there for years. So for years, even when it becomes weak or break into smaller particles, uh, it can find a way into the water system and then the marine species feed on them. We are also going to feed on marine species who have cancer. So that's you can see so it goes round round like like that you know apart from the issue of occupying space uh, we also have the issue of the fact that it is an economy is an health it brings it hazard to us okay we had this uh cleaner lagos initiative i think in the Abode time and one of the the provisions of that initiative was to recycle so what what happens to that? Why is it so difficult to have recycling plants? Because the ten percent of plastic can effectively be recycled into something else, and the other uh, maybe ninety percent maybe goes into fertilizer and so many other things. That, what is the challenge? What has become of that initiative, and what 
is the government doing about okay, it? so Lagos State government that uh, we work with, we work in partnership with Lagos State government. In fact, that's one of the reasons why we are having a program on Saudi called Work for Nature, creating our and the theme is solutions to plastic pollution. Mm. Let's talk about how we can bring solution, just little little things as individual you can do to deal with the issue of plastic pollution in our society. The initiative of recycling is still there in Lagos State. Lagos State government is promoting seriously through the Ministry of Environment and Water Resources how to recycle. So, but what people need to understand is that, that we used to say, waste is not a waste until it becomes a waste. So in other words, let it be in our head every time when we make use of plastic, if at all, we need to use it that. Let's find a place where they recycle. There are so many recycling companies in Nigeria. Even in this Lagos, there are so many of them. You can locate them. You can get their contacts online. You can even you can even reach out to NCF and say, okay, can you link us with a recycling company? I have waste, I have this plastic, I want to dispose of them. They will come around and pick it. They will even give incentive. Mm. They don't they don't pick for free. So that they even give incentive. Some of them give cash, some of them give you item. Maybe sometimes you do not saw that they build uh, points to a point that you now say, okay, you, are, you qualify for fridge, you qualify for blender and all the rest. So, so they're in place. It's just that people don't want, you know, before you get out this thing, they become certain weight and, you know, uh, certain level. People don't have that patience to do that. They say, ah, uh, I will just keep plastic, man. No, 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 I don't have that type. So it's a deliberate effort we need to make. We have to be intentional about our attitude to this plastic pollution. Once we can do that, we can achieve that in a, you know, that recycling thing. And you discover that it will reduce the amount of plastic waste we have in our environment. And aside the recycling, we have the upcycling also. The upcycling means that you can convert that uh, plastic to another use, you know, as an art or craft. Mm -hmm. People do it. Like this chair we are sitting on, I was in one studio yesterday and I saw that it was made of tire. Mm. Tire is also part of the uh, rubber we are talking about, part of the waste that don't decompose. So what? how are we converting this thing to other use? You know, furniture, you can convert it to furniture, um, uh, flower vase in the house, even oh, as little as... Uh, even buildings. I've, uh, seen, yeah. I've seen a video where someone used a plastic bottle. We have been in Abuja. No, we have been in Abuja, yes. Yeah. There, there are some guys that are doing that. We have some of them that are using it to do to create interlock mm. where they can. So people have been creative about it. You know, and you know, there's also money in it, so people can also go up, go into this recycling and upcycling business. Mm. So, now, what is your level of um, interaction with the, the governments of each state? Okay, let's zero in on Lagos right now. What's your level of interaction with them? What's how has their response been like uh, regarding the safeguarding of our environment? Oh, I, I, I will give kudos to this current government. And that, that's the truth. Um, like I said, we're having a program on Saturday in partnership with them. If they are not interested in the environment, they will not have signed on, on that program. This program we're having on Saturday is the 17th edition. It's an annual work for nature. Uh, that means that we've been having partnership with them over this program for 17 years. 17 years non-stop. And, and we, we still, still continue. see bo plastic bottles in our gutters like The truth is that, see, a typical Nigerian, a typical, it's very hard to convince to change the orientation. You have to do over and over education, over and over, over and over, over and over. There was a day, a governor in these states woke up and said, we are going to do one day uh, on free day. Yeah. Meaning that it is possible for people to actually drive without pressing the horn. Mm. People did it because they were compelled to. These commercial drivers that look as if their head is hot, that they eat everything, every small thing, pam, 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 pam. they actually they stop use it. it as DJ. That day, yes, <laughs> that day they actually, and you say also it's possible. There is also a government, governor that came and said, you can't hang on the bus. If you are driving commercial buses, if you even if you have conductor, let them sit down. They were complaining. So what we have majorly in Lagos is enforcement. Yeah. So that's also an aspect government need to look at. Currently now, I understand that the commissioner, the new commissioner for environment has been leading his team. They've been going to places, break, destroy shanties, close down some market because they, they said they are dirty, they didn't yeah. clean up and all the rest. That is what most of us understand. When we see that the government come to monitor or in, uh, implement the law and all the rest, you know, then we take action. Mm -hmm. We take action. That's it. When they say they have pedestrian bridge, 
don't cross because there's the pedestrian. Use it at least to save your own life and then to allow vehicular movement, free vehicular movement, instead of injuring drivers and you know, creating confusion. People say no. But by the time they start arresting them, uh, people will now make use of the pedestrian. Yeah, but have you also thought about the psychological um, orientation of the people? Because I give you an instance where I'm saying this. Sometimes it's not just the enforcement, uh, the physical um, enforcement that gets the people. I, the example I'm giving you is, for instance, in Calabar. There used to be a time when Donald Duke was the governor, yes. Uh, it was adjudged the most, uh, the neatest or the most, the cleanest state in not only Nigeria, but uh, maybe in the rest of Africa. It was very, very clean. And at that time, environmental sanitation, monthly environmental sanitation was banned because nobody needed it. They just needed to tell the people that, ah, the Calabar people are like the Oyibos. So everybody began to think in that direction. Nobody littered the streets anymore because if I'm Calabar, I will just beat my chest and say I'm part of the neatest people. Now, can't that kind of orientation come to Lagos? Wait, because Lagos people have some kind of pride. A, a Kony Baje kind a of Kony Baje. Yes. yes. So when they go outside, they tell you, I'm coming from Lagos. Do you, yeah. you know who I am? Can't that kind of orientation See, also be explored? Lagos is an example of Nigeria. Lagos is like Nigeria has 36 states, different tribe, minimum of 240 major tribes. That's what Lagos is. Mm. So, by tribe, it means that we have different languages, different culture, different understanding, different biases. So that is what Lagos is, metropolitan, cosmopolitan. So you are having different set of people in Lagos with their own belief. It becomes so challenging to manage. It's not like a cross river. How many tribes do you have in cross river? Pardon me. So well, who are the set Vietnam, of people that are there? Vietnam the, said the, one the, kilometer meet another language that is in Cross River. Uh, so <laughs> no, that, 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 that language was even the, the, that, that's, the major that's, difference that you have in yeah. unlike Lagos. So you see that we have and in Lagos the truth is this if you want to do it, maybe one day if you can you want to carry out a survey mm. but at the um, early uh, early year, January between January first and twenty first, mm. come and stay in Baga. Come and see vehicles coming in into Lagos and uh, trucks bringing in new people. Lagos keep increasing every day. So these people that Not are coming in first, every day, every, every so day. and then these people that are coming in, they are coming in with the orientation from their own state. Mm. So they are coming into Lagos that has an existing law, you know, and then so it take a lot to get them to comply. That's the challenge we have in Lagos. Mm. So what That's do we do challenge. now? Because, so what we need to yeah. do is using this platform of the media to keep talking about it. Mm. Every media organization needs to talk about why the city of Lagos has to be clean and talk about what are the little things they need to do. That's number one. Number two is enforcement. Government have to put all the agents in place to enforce without collecting bribery, without bias, without bias, without anything. They need to do it, mm. you know. And number, number two is that they need to sanction. Don't just enforce, don't just make people like the issue of the pedestrian i talked about you are caught and let the person face the law and you don't need to it's not an issue of uh, i will penalize fifty thousand. you don't need it people cannot even afford to pay those money but that's not what they need just tell somebody that there was a time a governor i think fashola if you are caught crossing the road or litter the place they don't find you cash they'll just take you to one place go and do community, community service. service that community service you can spend hours there people detest it because it delays them but that issue of fine, how much ten thousand? Because uh -huh. hey, John, Alpha, if you get me ten thousand, I will pay it and I will go my way. You might think that uh, to be in the record that you have been uh, five. Or, no, 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 it's not. But people are not. Paying. But you delay them because time is money. People will begin to feel that pain. There was a day a guy was um, had a wedding to attend abroad, and then he, 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 he beat the traffic lights. He was caught. He initially denied, in Nigeria initially denied, but later they showed him video. Do you believe he said yes? So the judge told him, I'm not going to find him for anything. Just stay in the court. For the old days, sat there. Number one, he was supposed to be the best man at the wedding. He means that wedding. 
Number two, you spend the whole day in court. That is enough punishment. Mm. Those are the things we need to introduce to change the orientation of people. Not every time you want to find the 50,000. You know, you see all these uh, government agents, they want the car, you follow one way or do this. They quickly run into your vehicle. They do all this. Thing. They say they are writing a, a ticket. They are ticket. No, 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 no. All those things, no. I'm telling you, if you delay somebody for the whole day, or you tell them, go and watch the public toilet, they will not, do, they will not be caught next time mm. doing it. That is what we need to put in place. That sanction. That's serious punishment that will feel that will make that will uh, um, humiliate you or humble you, so to say, you know, and yeah. that's it. But in your in your aggressive campaign as it is, you are also expecting the media to do their bit. Will that bit of the media just be talking, be be mindful of your environment all the time? I remember things like Andrew. I'm sure you remember that yeah, one. Andrew, where are you stepping out, you two, okay. and all those those kind of adverts and all that. Have you done something like that that talks to the people without telling them that I came here to advise you? Because that's what some of those things do. Yeah. So um, aside going to TV and radio to talk about it, we also do community engagement. We, as I said, we go into the grassroots where we tell people what to do, where we do uh, stakeholders engagement, we have meetings, we always call town hall meeting, you discuss with every necessary thing. For instance, the virtual project that we are doing, because virtual is going to extinction, mm -hmm. if virtual goes as a nature sanitary officer, ordained by God himself, that the only animal we have in this world that can do clean up crow, clean up activity, without emitting disease into the atmosphere, is a special gift for those species of bed. You know, people are killing them. People are killing them for belief base, meaning that they are using it for one juju or the other. People are killing them and eating them, you know. But we are doing this campaign. And we can't do this campaign and just talk to people. You need to go and identify different group of people, stakeholders, and bring them together. One of them is a tradomedic, you know. So, and the hunters, we've been having engagement with them. And truly, they were the one who came up and said, because we asked, okay, we don't get voice as we used to get. The voice has declined, has reduced. So if, assuming you don't have voice again, and you are using it for this stratomedic, what else can you do? They came up with it that you, we can use, they can actually use uh, plants. One of it in Yoruba, they call it a way, a way, jeje, a way, something, something. So they were the one who came up with some of these plants, you know, by them. So we appeal to them, okay, stop using voice, use this plant. And truly, they have adopted it because they have an association. We appeal to the house. That's a way to get people to change. Mm -hmm. And then you also come up with some jingle, uh, paid advert everywhere. There was a time we did some people that around uh, airports in this Nigeria to talk uh, to educate people and why they need to um, have a change of action and address. And on social media, we do promotion of our messages and address what action we want people to take. Yeah, but 17 years is almost as old as the current democracy in Nigeria. You've been engaging with government. How would you assess the level of success so far? Oh, it's been, it's been, it's been yielding because um, if it has not been produced any result, I can assure you, Lagos State Government that is known for excellent will not want to partner with us. So, but it's not only one thing we concentrate on. This year, we are looking at solutions to plastic pollution. Last year, we look at sustained uh, diversity. So every year we always come up with one team, most of the time in line with what the environment did. That's what the team. So we just, because environment is wide, it's large. So you have to just take an aspect to deal with. So every year we look at what can we promote, what can we talk about this year? Let's deal with this. So what is the result? You can, how do you measure, you discover that what, for instance, the plastic pollution app, as we continue to talk about it, you see that people begin to have a change of attitude, the orientation, and then we also take it to schools. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have been doing that in partnership with some corporate organizations through our environmental education. We go to school, we donate beans where they can put plastics. So the recycle company comes there to pick those plastics. So that reduces the amount of plastic waste they have in the environment. And they educate a the child. That child will go home and go and tell the parent. And the parent, because the parent, because we love our children, we listen to them. Mm. Almost every day, my children engage me. They say this, uh, they, ask, they told them this in school, they ask them to do this. So either you like and it or not, because persuasive. they are your own, because you love them, you also fall in line. So that's a good way to penetrate into families. 
Okay, talk to Lagosians now. Final mm -hmm. word. Okay, so Lagos, we are asking that this Saturday you can also join us in our program, uh, Work for Nature. So um, it's an open event. We have one taking place in Ogudu, another one at Ikeja, another one at Toniko. You can reach out to us, NCF, on our social media platform where you can participate in the program. However, beyond that, let us understand that the environment belongs to all of us. Without us, the environment will survive. But without the environment, we cannot survive. For instance, the oxygen we need to breathe, um, it comes from the tree. Mm -hmm. So if you cut the tree, then we are going to die. And nobody wants to die. Even when you get old, you still want to be alive. So, and that's why we need to take issue of environment very <laughs> serious. All right, thank you very much, Dr. for coming mm -hmm. on the program this morning. It's a pleasure that we've had you here. We thank do you. hope that uh, um, next time maybe we'll be talking about some, talking to these, uh, some of these recycling companies so that we get to have an insight as to what they do and what they require. Uh, is it that I will have to become like the abuki I see on the street? I can, <laughs> no, no, no. I can get um, no, no. incentives for the plastics I, I find around my house mm -hmm. or that. So we'll discuss those issues as the time Great. goes Great. on. So um, Oladakpo Shoneye is the Communications Manager at Nigeria Conservation Foundation and he's been talking to us about the disaster of plastic pollution, especially here in Lagos. So if you're a Lagosian and you're watching us right now, do your bit wherever you are and let the government do the rest uh, for us. We cannot always wait for the government because the plastics are in our environment. They are not in our lousa. That's not where you find them. But that's how we also are going to draw the curtain on the program this morning. It was a pleasure having you uh, stay there and watch us. Let's do it again tomorrow. And on behalf of the entire Breakfast on Plus TV Africa family, my name is Nyamgul Akkaji. Have a wonderful day.